Now, when you go into the options menu, there is a particular option available called edit which basically turns your Nokia N97 into a mini Photoshop, if you will. When you have your image ready to be edited, all you do is do a one tap on the photo itself, gives you all of the different effects that are available. Now this is where the D-pad comes in handy to go from one effect to the other by highlighting it. You can add different coloring effects such as negative, sepia, black and white. You can do red eye reduction, insert frame, posterize, insert text, insert clip art, insert a talk bubble, rotate it, crop, decrease the size, alter the sharpness, the contrast, or the brightness of the picture. Once you highlight clip art, all of these different graphics are available to put onto the photo. There you go. You can have the option to add the effect and keep it or undo it. One library that I'm sure you guys are interested in seeing happens to be videos and TV. You can access video through Last Watch, video feeds, or my videos, which happens to be all of the videos on the drive of the N97. What we're going to do is we're going to access Last Watch and see what happens. Another beautiful day in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Oh, oh my God. Everybody lock the doors. All right, we're going to pause it. As you can see, you have touch controls on the right. You have the back control that basically takes you to the library of the videos. And then you have fast forward, skip forward. Then you have rewind and skip backward, as well as the play pause in the middle. And then you also have an options menu that gives you further control over the way that the video happens to look on the screen and also the muting um, controls. And then, at the, and then at the bottom of the video, you have the same kind of progress bar that is also present in the music library for the N97. Now again, you can also use your stylus to place the progress bar at any point in the video and it continues from that point where you've selected. Okay, now this is where the change aspect ratio can come into play. Through the options menu, we right now have the video playing in its natural state to where you have the letterboxing on the top and the bottom of the footage. Now if we go under stretch, it has this particular effect to where it fills up the entire screen. Now we're going to go into Zoom, and it has this particular effect. This is like my favorite place ever! I told you you'd love it. Okay. But we're going to go back into the natural ratio. But we're going to go into the natural aspect ratio. Oh my God, I and once again, you can control volume. And you can also control the progress of the movie. Lila. Don't, don't throw it. I'll be right down. Okay. Okay. Here you go. Thanks. Hey, I didn't mean to sneak up on you. I was... Oh, yeah. No problem. What's that? All right. And that's basically it. Now, Sports Tracker has been very good for me on the N97 due to the large screen. Or in your workout summary in the Sports Tracker, you can basically switch from one screen to the next with your stylus. And the one thing I do like about this big wide screen is that it shows my entire running route 
with no trouble at all. Whereas on the E71, having a much smaller screen, I had to do vertical scrolling up and down to see the entire route of my... You yeah. have all these workouts, and as you can see, certain ones have a green arrow to the right of it. That only means that I've uploaded the information to my online account with the Nokia Sports Tracker. So I'm going to give you an example of that right now. We're going to highlight a particular workout, then click it again to go into it. Through the options menu, I'm going to click upload to service. Yes, I want to share with everybody. And right now it's uploading. Once it uploads, you have that alert showing, that it's showing you that it's complete. And then when we hit the back button, you see right now that this particular workout now has a green arrow next to it, showing that it has been uploaded. In my personal opinion, I do feel like the sports tracker from Nokia is just as reliable as the Nike Sport Kit that I use with my iPod Touch. I'm going to go ahead and click into Hero of Sparta and give you guys an impression of what it's all about. is that you can either control it with a touch screen or with the D-pad here next to the QWERTY. And then this is also a control to have him use his weapon. But I mainly use the D-pad because I find it to be a lot more accurate. I'm going to try to do a move here. Uh-oh. But in regards to the gameplay for Hero of Sparta in comparison to my iPod Touch, there is really no comparison. Um, the iPod Touch and the iPhone version is 10 times better than what I've been able to get with this N97. Now, the great thing about this N97 is the 3.5 millimeter headset jack at the top of the device, which makes it compatible with any sort of regular headphones or any sort of auxiliary inputs for your car stereo. Now, once I ended up purchasing this car adapter for my N97, the battery life has been a little bit easier to deal with. Right now, I'm going to take this jack to the cassette adapter and connect it to the top of the N97. There you go. Regards to having a good amount of volume with music playback for the N97, the same principles come into play just like on the E75. I usually have the volume set at mid-level so that it doesn't overpower the speakers inside my Honda. Well, as you guys can hear, the sound from the N97 is definitely comparable to that of the E75 as well as my iPod Touch whenever I have that in the car. The first thing you will notice with the FM transmitter is that it has two areas. One area to cut it on and off and another area to control the frequency. Now whenever you decide to turn on the FM transmitter, you'll have a pop-up asking you if you really want to do it. We're going to click yes. 
and it told me that it's transmitting at 88.5 megahertz. Go ahead to my stereo and be sure that it is transmitting at 88.5. The reception quality of the music playback through your FM transmitter depends a lot on where the device is placed and how it's placed whenever you have it inside of your car. The FM transmitter is indeed a great feature to have on the N97. I just won't be using it because I have the 3.5 millimeter headset jack to where I could just do um, an auxiliary input via the cassette adapter. So even though I have no need for the FM transmitter, it's nice to know that it is included on this device, which makes it even more versatile to be a car stereo companion. So once we click on the email widget, we are then brought into my personal Gmail inbox. Kinetic scrolling is not possible, so I have no choice but to use a stylus or my fingernail to control going up and down on the inbox messages and then double tap on it. We have a message here from Skyfire. Now here at the bottom you have a number of different touch commands for an incoming message. You can either reply to the message or forward it to someone else or you can choose to delete the message or you can flag it. Okay, now you also have options available. And then you also have the back button that takes you to the inbox. I ended up receiving an email from someone who had a question about the handbrake application. So what I did was I responded to that message with a reply. In order to flag this message as being replied to, there is an arrow, a red arrow, on the envelope icon that you can see right here. Now, if there's a message that I want to reply to, what I can also do is tap on it and hold it. And there is a drop down menu of different commands that I can take to this message. Now, with the built in accelerometer, you can also switch the orientation with no problem at all for the email application. And just like with the E75, you can also click on the inbox and give yourself access to any other folders that happen to be available. You have a number of soft commands to the right side of the screen of the email client. You have the options menu, which is basically self-explanatory. And then above that, you have the compose key. And then you have a delete key, which allows you to delete a message. And then you also have the reply forward command. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide this and it basically takes us out of the application and back to the home screen. But behind the scenes, the email application is still running and will continue to update whenever I receive new incoming emails. Now once I tap onto an icon, I am taken to a contact page that basically shows all the ways that you can communicate with this person or company. To contact Apple Inc. through voice call or to go to their website, I would only have to do a one tap on a feature. There you go. Now we are being taken to the official website for Apple Incorporated. Okay, but if I want to do a voice call to Apple, all I have to do is do a one tap on the voice call feature, and there you go. Welcome to Apple. Your call may be recorded for quality assurance. I'm an auditor.
You can, of course, control the volume of the call with the rocker keys on the side. And you can also activate the handset or the loudspeaker via the touch control here. You can hold, mute a call, or end it. Now, in the middle of a call, you have a dialer or an options function. Now, the dialer basically brings up a dial pad in case you need to access any sort of menu, like the one that you're listening to now from Apple. And then you also have an options menu that brings up different commands involving your call. And then we're going to exit the call. And each time you end a call, it shows the duration as a pop-up. Now, while you are on the main contact page, the first tab basically shows all of the quickest ways to get in touch with that contact. And then there's a second tab that basically goes into more detail in regards to address, web page, um, email address, or whatever you happen to put in there in filling out the contact information. And like with any other application, the accelerometer basically allows you to see it in landscape or portrait mode. Now to activate the camera, all you have to do is slide the protective covering off the lens and you're in the application automatically. We happen to be in the still camera mode because you have the, cam the digital camera icon at the upper left corner of the screen. On the right side of the viewfinder, you have these touch commands. You have the exit command as well as a touch shutter command that automatically takes a picture. And then you have your flash as well as a set of onboard features for the camera itself as well as the options menu. You have your scene mode, video mode which switches over to the camcorder. You have a grid that shows up on the viewfinder. You have a self timer. You can change the color tone which gives you a live preview of what the picture would look like. White balance which also gives a live preview. Then you have exposure, light sensitivity, contrast, sharpness, sequence, and access to the photo library. Holding down the shutter button halfway operates the autofocusing mechanism. Now we are going to go into the camcorder. Now the one thing you will notice immediately about the camcorder is that it takes advantage of the entire widescreen of the display. Now to the right, you have your typical touch controls to exit the application, to start recording, to activate the video light, to access different settings, as well as gain access to more options. You have yourself a symbol for the camcorder. Another great application that I've run into from the Nokia Ovi store is Gravity. Gravity is basically an engine that works with your Twitter account if you happen to have one. As you can see, you have your original timeline view, your replies from different people, and kinetic scrolling really does work well within this application. You have messages, your, your own personal tweets, as well as favorites, and friends and followers. Now, before I can put in a new tweet, I have to first go online. I'm connected. So right now I can put in a brand new tweet and then you have the text field that allows you to put in a brand new message. And then after I'm done, I click update. And as you can see, the topmost entry 
have gone into my Twitter account via Gravity.